After the winter solstice passes, my enthusiasm and hope for a new gardening season grows as daylight increases each day. Seeing the first vegetable sprout is a simple moment of joy that crowns this experience. It's about a week later and I do see signs of germination. It's the arugula that's already peeking through the mulch. I added, I made sure to add a layer of grass clippings about two days after I had planted everything. And that has helped the seeds germinate because as a counterpoint to last season, we haven't had as much rain now that it's beginning of spring. So this helps keep down the moisture so that the seeds can germinate. If I didn't have this mulch, I think they would have a hard time because I can see that the soil is moist, nicely moist, not waterlogged underneath the, the mulch. Without the mulch, it would be dry because it's a raised bed. Usually things dry up in a raised bed if left uncovered. That risk of drying is a con for raised beds, but they have several pros, including making it easier to grow early crops as the soil warms up faster during spring. Since arugula is one of the fastest growing leafy greens, I was sure that in just two to three weeks, I would be able to start harvesting my first fresh salads of the year. I had sown arugula in the last days of March. They germinated the first week of April, and by the first days of May, they were already producing nice tender leaves. I had not added any additional fertilizer to my raised bed, other than a thin layer of fresh grass clippings weekly to act as a mulch. I did not have to water them at all, so this was turning out to be a very low maintenance system. I couldn't be happier. Harvesting would be the most time-consuming chore at this point. Having all my leafy greens protected inside the new garden bed was a huge plus. It's always a joy to do the first harvest. Arugula is one of those plants that opens up the spring season in terms of greens. They just grow so fast and you do have to keep up and always harvest. Otherwise, they just bolt and you waste all your efforts. So it's best to harvest them when they're young. Even if you may think that, oh, I might wait a little bit more for them to get bigger but in my experience, it's best to just seize the moment and eat it fresh. When it's baby arugula, I think it's when it has the best taste, so why not take advantage of that? You may also notice how much more pungent and flavorful freshly picked arugula can be. It cannot be compared to the stuff we buy packaged in plastic clamshells in stores. I'm really happy that Alice Waters reintroduced America to arugula and other greens uh, because before the movement that she started, this farm-to-table movement, starting right there with the edible schoolyards in Chepanese in the Napa Valley in Northern California, before that America had forgotten about the joys of dark greens and, and fresh, real fresh produce coming from organic farms and different varieties. Unless you, you had perhaps, let's say, an Italian heritage and you still grew the plants that your grandparents grew, you would probably be eating iceberg lettuce. That's it. But as word got out and the culture shifted, we are seeing many more options in the grocery store. But of course, while you can always support your grocery store, and buy these um, organic um, mixed greens and they're wonderful to have. Why not grow your own also, especially in the summer and springtime when it's not that hard to do and you get a very fresh and delicious harvest. I have noticed there are several little holes in the leaves and in my previous garden that wasn't the case. It could be that there aren't that many beneficial insects that are harbored and settled into this place since there's only grass around here. 
not um, perennial flowers and things like that that can um, provide housing habitat for the beneficial insects. So that could be it. I don't see any praying mantises. And my old home was full of praying mantises everywhere, especially as time progressed. I do see some spiders here. That's a good sign. I always like to keep spiders around. They're a garden workhorse. But anyways, it's still good. Despite the little holes, just treat it as a, a ranch treats cheese, I suppose. <laughs> they, they're not, they don't care about the holes. Despite not being picture perfect, my first arugula harvest was sure to be delicious. Coming up in the next block, I will show you how to prepare fresh arugula salad with a twist, right after this commercial. If you're loving the video and would like to help me produce more, you can purchase an original painting from my Etsy shop or support me through Patreon. Your direct support is the reason why I have been able to produce two episodes a week during the spring. So thank you. With my first bowl of fresh harvested arugula at hand, I went about preparing a simple salad recipe that is an explosion of flavors. Since I had picked these leaves closer to lunchtime, first I submerged them in cold water to help them crisp up a bit. If you don't harvest during early morning, you may end up with fresh leaves that are less than perky. Submerging them in cold water for 5 to 10 minutes will increase water content that may have evaporated due to the midday sun. Adding a bit of vinegar seems to really help also. We all know that we should harvest our greens early in the morning to get them to be as crisp and fresh as possible. But that's not always feasible within our daily schedules. And sometimes we just remember to get salad when it's already lunchtime. That's the worst time because that's when the sun is directly heating everything up at 90 degrees or close to it. So what you do in those cases is what I'm doing here. Some cold water, a bit of vinegar, and just wait five to 10 minutes depending on how wilted they are. As I waited for the leaves to crisp up, I went about preparing the other ingredients. I like to add thinly sliced apples to salads, especially arugula salad. I chose a gala apple, but you can use a green apple if you prefer the acidity it adds. Gala apples have more of a fruit aroma and are sweeter. I think they pair really well with arugula, which is naturally spicy. I poured a few teaspoons of apple cider vinegar directly onto the sliced apples. This will brighten the flavor and also prevent them from browning after being cut. I then drizzled some extra virgin olive oil and seasoned with salt. I think the apple cider vinegar pairs really well with apples, for obvious reasons. Dança valsa da palavra vida. I then thinly sliced a red onion, as thinly as I possibly could, and dropped it into the apples. There is one ingredient missing that I think will punch up the flavor and it's right outside. This is what I would call the pulo do gato, or cat's leap as we say in Portuguese. It is the secret that will make all the difference that people usually wouldn't divulge. Sort of like the ace in the hole. That is rosemary. Its fragrance will make all the difference in this aromatic salad. Just a few needles are more than enough since it is a powerful herb. I minced it and sprinkled it over the dish. By this time, the arugula leaves had crisped up, 
All I needed to do was to rinse them and then add them to my salad. When will we heal the troubles that we inherit? When will we share the fruit of the land? Humble hearts, caring hands, willing to come together, not as foes, but friends. How can we learn to love one another? How can we serve as we feed each other, leaving our fears to the past will I adjusted the salt to taste, tossed it, and enjoyed. This was a great way of celebrating a new harvest. I could only hope for many more to come.